Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to keep talking about the CMD because the CMD is way important for Docker containers because the CMD keeps alive the container itself. So now I just want to show you some cool things that you can do on the CMD. The first thing that you need to know is that let me create a container with the image that we created in the previous lesson. We're just going to create a container. Okay, so let's just put it another name. Or you could just delete the other container and that's all. So let's put another name. And now you see that the container is alive. And I think that I already taught you one command, which is the docker lux command. The docker lux command allows you to see the output of the CMD. Remember that whenever we started the Apache CTL D foreground, this was the output that we were seeing. So now that this process is started, you can see that this is actually in foreground mode. So if you do this, docker logs apache then you are actually seeing the execution of the process itself. And if your process creates any kind of logs, you are going to see those logs in here. So that's important. So my point is that whatever you put on your CMD, you are going to be able to see it using docker logs. So if the process that you start creates some kind of log, some kind of request, some kind of log that you can see, you can do it. You can take a look at the logs by using this command. But remember that this will only show you the logs that are related to the CMD. But what do I mean by that? Let's just try something for you to understand it. Let's create here a new file, which is going to be called, I don't know, CMD. That sage. We're going to create a script, a simple bash script. Bash script starts with bin bash, I think. So now you can do something, for example, say echo starting httpd. And then you could put a packy ctl d foreground. So basically, this is the command that we're putting as a CMD. So a packy foreground. And then this should start a process inside of the container. And then you can say, you can even do validations here. You can say f, this is actually bash. So you say f, uh, the last execution is equals to zero, then that means it was good. Then you can say echo, this went good. And then you say else, you could put here there was an error starting the server or the service and you just close the if. So basically that's it. Now you are going to see that this will be printed in the screen starting httpd. Then we will try to start this process and we will do a simple validation. So what we're going to do now is that we will be editing our docker file 3 and we will be using the copy instructions somewhere. So we'll just do a copy here. And we will say, please docker, copy the CMD that is sage file that I just created, copy it to somewhere, let's say cmd.sh in the root of the container. Then if you want, you can just create a run instruction and give executable permissions to this is script because normally in Linux you need to give executable permissions in order to execute a script. And finally, we will remove this line here in the CMD. And what do you think that we're going to put here? Yes, we're going to put this file. Remember, we're copying the file that we just created outside of the container. We just created a simple bash script which prints out starting HTTPD, then tries to start the service and if something goes wrong, then it will print the error or it will print an error message. We give executable permissions to this guy and then in the end, we execute this. So uh, I think that we have a problem here and it's CMD. Uh, this validation never is going to come because this will always be in the foreground mode. So this will never get here. So I'm just going to remove that. We will just keep it like this, it's as simple as this. So let me just save it. And we're doing exactly the same. We just copy the file and then we just define this file as a CMD. Because remember that if you take a look at the file, 
the command that will keep your service alive is here. So there is no problem there. Now let's try to build this image. Let's try to build it using the version 11, I think. Yep, let's build it. Let's see what happens. And that's great. As you see here, it's copying the file, giving executable permissions, and then it's running the file itself. So now let's try to create a container. Let's remove this guy. And let's try to create a container using the new image that we just built. So let's try to do a run. Remember that the version is the version 11. And let's see what happens. If we type Docker PS, then great, the container is alive. And now if we type docker logs to see the output of the CMD and we paste the name of the container, then that's cool. You can see starting HTTPD right here. And remember that this output comes from the script that we created and this output comes from the execution of the Apache CTL-D foreground. So if you just type cat to your CMD, you will see echo start in HTTPD, which is exactly what you are seeing here. And then we start the process and you see here the output of this execution. So I hope that you have learned how the CMD works. It's pretty important that the process that you put is always in foreground mode. So this is it for this video. I'll see you in the next lesson.